Um, but I guess getting into the to the subject of today, how do you react to Tucker Carlson's recent interview of uh, of Putin? Because there was a lot of <clears throat> interesting back and forth. There was a lot of a very very long history lesson at the beginning, which was which was quite interesting. I took Russian history in college, so I at least had that understanding of it. But I guess how do you react to, I guess not just the interview, but also a lot of the thoughts around it. So I think the interview was pretty interesting. Uh, for us Slavic people, the long history lesson is just your standard, you know, Sunday afternoon lunch with the family standard fare. So to us, no surprise. Um, I'm sure someone like yourself, who is also a history buff, you can appreciate that. I found the commentary much more fascinating, particularly from the Western portion of our both mainstream and then other media and pundits and influencers. And even from Tucker himself, even though he said it's going to probably take him another year to absorb everything that's happened and, and how the interview went. But the particular lesson in history tells me and shows me that fundamentally East and West think in completely different um, ways and we operate completely differently. Now, for someone like myself, who is Slavic, essentially, and who spent 30 years here in the United States, but then, you know, maybe less than 20 years, I'm giving myself away in terms of my age, uh, less than 20 in Serbia, I can see very well and I understand both sides. Um, and I am blessed for that. I am blessed to be able to absorb and understand both sides of, of this showdown, if you will, simply because um, I think the fundamental difference is that the Slavic people, and particularly Russia, operate within the framework of thousands of years of history, where for us Americans in particular, we operate within that very pragmatic, quick thinking, two, three hundred years of what we've accomplished and what we can pragmatically do now. However, given that we live in a time period where we are aggressively even destroying that little bit of history that we have, which is wonderful history and we should all be proud of it, but we are actively working on completely dismantling it, destroying it and rewriting it. Even what we had to lean on as historical background for our own nation, we don't even have that anymore. So I could see how much of what Putin was saying was either frustrating or annoying, or it just went over people's heads because they can't quite comprehend why that was relevant. And again, I said many even European nations used to operate within that framework of their long traditional royal histories and then, you know, transition into democracies or whatever the governmental uh, framework was, all of that is being destroyed. So you can see a really big difference in between East and West, and that reflects in the geopolitical landscape, that reflects in terms of policy, in terms of uh, perception, in terms of diplomacy, in terms of how each superpower plays its game on the international stage. And there is this interesting saying that Russians saddle their horse very slowly, but once they saddle it and they're up, they ride really fast. Wow. And I think, I think that that is what we're seeing. And it is unfortunate that the, let's say the Anglo-Saxon West, and then the, I, I often go back to this. There is hierarchy in whiteness, if you wish, uh, just like there's hierarchy. And we talk a lot about neocolonial history and we talk a lot about race relations in this country where there's something to be said about also differences between perceptions within white cultures, white communities themselves, whether they're Anglo-Saxon or Germanic or Slavic. And I would argue that the imposition almost of the Anglo-Western framework of culture has sort of almost put down uh, the Slavic importance and relevance and influence where you can kind of tell in, in that interview that Vladimir Putin and entire, I guess, former Soviet Union bloc, which is Russia today, 
uh, was hoping to be embraced by the West was hoping to be on parallel footing and and on equal footing, essentially, because again, you you see even uh, Tucker's almost uh, bafflement by the fact that Moscow is such a huge city. It's a beautiful city. It's very well developed. It has a beautiful metro where you're not going to get mugged, raped, beaten, or whatever. Um, And he compares it to what we effectively have now in the West, especially in big American cities. Um, Russia has reinvented itself. And I think part of that American pragmatism that we have had for, you know, two, three hundred years of our history was let's solve the problems. Let's not think into history. Let's not worry about that. But that has also gotten us into a lot of trouble because... Mm -hmm eliminating completely from the geopolitical conversation thousands of years of strife, ethnic strife, religious strife, history, culture of all these other regions and other nations and other peoples that we are effectively getting ourselves involved with, aggressively involved with, even uh, imposing our will upon them is getting us to the point where we are essentially hated around the world because they expect us to also respect who they are as cultures, as humans, as people on that fundamental level to respect their traditions. And we really haven't done that. And then there's something to be said about the fact that as a nation for us, we have all become an American. And I think that is a fantastic concept. No matter where you came from, you embrace the American way of life. You embrace Americanism, at least for us who are legal immigrants, who are Americans by choice, first and foremost, and who have embraced what it meant to be an American. So you would go up to people who have been here for several generations and kind of ask them about their ancestry, whether they're Italian, German, Irish, Polish, whatever they are, Serbian. And a lot of them would say, oh, I don't know. I'm just a mix of everything. But first and foremost, I'm an American. Where I now see a problem is that we are also effectively dismantling the national identity, the sovereign national identity of an American that is shameful, that is something to be looked down upon, that is something that paints a target on your back and you are labeled all kinds of terrible derogatory names, where in the other part of the world, sovereign Russians are very proud of being Russian. And nobody is targeting them for that. Sovereign Serbs or Poles lately, they have elected very liberal government, which I find um, very odd. Uh, They were holding strong for a while. But you look at Hungary, uh, you look at Hungarians, Romanians, that entire part of, I would say, Central and Eastern Europe, they have held on strongly to their Slavic identity, to their Orthodox Christian identity, and also to the fact that they're sovereign nationals of those specific respective nations. And they are not embarrassed by that. They are not targeted. We are now being targeted for being proud Americans. So once you strip from us the proud sovereign Americanism, And we have long ago lost the Irish, the Italian, the German, whatever the ancestry was. Well, the question is, who are we today? Do we really know the Western geopolitical construct overall doesn't really know who it is because we are demolishing our history. We are demolishing our faith. We are demolishing the tradition. We are demolishing the family structure. And we are up against nation like China, like India, like Russia, who are extremely proud and sovereign in that identity. And that is actually the greatest battle that we are facing. It is the cultural battle. And I am afraid that they have an upper hand um, in this simply because they have stuck to their traditions. They revamped their traditions because we often view Russia within their Uh, communist past, but the communist past is just a speck of dust in their long history where, again, Putin really took the time to lecture about that so that the West would understand where they're coming from, why they operate on the level that they operate on, and why this is so important for them. And ultimately, I didn't find his interview aggressive or threatening However, I did find it very decisive 
Mm-hmm. And it showed us again where the red lines are and what they will not allow. Um, I think there is some sour grapes there simply because after the Cold War, they thought they were promised to be embraced, to be on the leveled playing field and to partially almost be in, not just embraced it to NATO, but into other Western organizations. And that never happened. And you have well, to well, Tucker actually Russia. made a comment about that yesterday. He was speaking, he, at, he was speaking at an event. Um, I think it was like the In world, Gover- so the world government from conference Moscow to Belgrade, Serbia, and from Belgrade to Dubai. So I knew his itinerary as he was departing Moscow. Yeah, and he and he mentioned in in this talk in Dubai that he, Bill Clinton was not, you know, basically told uh, Putin that they weren't allowing him into NATO, and he, and he's and Tucker had mentioned like if you allow that to happen, like any sort of conflict or any sort of sort of tension is is over, like it's done yes. with, like we've we've actually reached a, you know, you're bringing Russia into the body that was created to actually fight Russia, which exactly. which is quite interesting. 